八岁男书院呢，是香港最早成立的几所学校之一。一百五十年来，这里出过非常多的名人，有很多校友呢，也选择家里几代人呢、啊，都继续来这里念书。南八岁啊，是以学生和学校之间的这种强烈归属感所闻名。很多校友在毕业以后多年，都还会选择佩戴学校的领带，回来参加学校的活动，也给予在校的小学弟们呐、啊，以指导和就业实习的机会。那如果以校友毕业以后与学校的关系这点来衡量的话，南八翠非常成功。DBS。Is approaching 150th anniversary. As oh, yeah. I see, you know the students, alumni, they're so proud of the school. <laughs> so are, for you, are. what are you most proud of? They always say that without DBS, or without the the school, uh, they wouldn't be who they are today. Our task is to plant seeds in them, uh, plant seeds of knowledge, of wisdom, and values, and hopefully it will bear fruit in the future. Mm. And um, we're very thankful that almost all boys. They don't realize that they have graduated because they come back so often, even more often than when they were students here sometimes. In your mind, what does a future-looking education look like? What do you want DBS to be, you know, uh, 20 years down the road? People always say that oh, students um, who are entering school now, um, if, you know, 10, 15 years from now, 60% uh, of the jobs won't be here. Um, I don't think it's a, an issue where jobs will be here or not. There will be jobs. There will just be different types of jobs. Not even principals or teachers can teach fast enough uh, for the students to learn everything that they need to learn uh, to deal with or to navigate the, the future. So what we need to impart in them is a mindset, constantly being curious, uh, constantly willing to equip yourself and adapt. Um, that is as vital, if not more vital, than book knowledge. Obviously, there is, you know, academic rigor because, you know, there's a reality there. But uh, we need to also set our eyes on the long term, where we need to, you know, equip the students uh, far beyond uh, their exam years. You know, when they come out as leaders, as servants, as, you know, um, citizens, to be able to work with people and, um, turn the community into a better place. The ability to empathize, the ability to uh, counter adversity, the ability to stay humble, uh, these things will always be emphasized. We talk about techno technological changes a lot, but what drives the changes or what, make these, what makes these changes effective is the ability to empathize. And when you empathize, you're able to see the needs of the people, uh, the needs of different community. Then you design uh, solutions for them to help improve their quality of life. <笑>比賽你都會去的,去的盡量去得就去啦,考制的比賽你都會去,去得都去,考制的比賽都會去,考制的比賽都會去,考制的比賽都會去,考制的比賽都會去,考制的比賽都會去,考制的比賽都會去
。咁因為我哋大家都係男仔，所以大家中意踢波啦。咁可能砌機械人方面都係中意做啲踢波咁嘅嘢啦。所以呢個等於係一個 robotics 一個社團社團嚟嘅。係咯，呢、這個我哋叫。誒 robotics team 啦，咁都係大家有興趣嘅先至嚟參加。咁大家可能誒課餘嘅時間啦、食飯嘅時候，或者有時空堂嘅時候，我哋都會主動過嚟。雖然在香港社會競爭激烈，亞洲啊又有着特別重視學習成績的傳統，但是鄭基恩說，他和拔萃南書院希望給學生提供一個過程驅動的學習體驗，而不僅僅是關注考試成績和學習知識，希望讓學生在學習的過程中。和老师进行全方位的互动，塑造学生的品格。How do you do this character-based,、uh, you know, education at school? That's a good question. I think two things need to go simultaneously: the formal curriculum,、um, which includes imparting of knowledge, and also a curriculum to to train the mindset of the students, but also、um, something that something needs to happen outside of the classroom. They're searching for who they are, you know, their place under the sun. And so、uh, we need to give them some tools to navigate these uncertain waters. If you have disagreements with your classmates, you know how you're going to, you know, resolve these differences, you know, without going back to your parents.、Mm-hmm. And we also need to tell the parents to give the students、uh, or their children some space to work things out themselves. They need to learn how to work with others, seeking their own passion, and ultimately finding their own calling in life. And this way, when they, you know, exit the schools and you know enter into society, they won't be drowned or they won't be shocked because all these real-world uncertainties, you know, will surface. You'll know that there's always room for you to improve, and there's always somebody who ha- who who has gifts that you don't have. I think that's important because once you switch from teaching knowledge to teaching skills and values, the teacher, the role of the teacher actually changes well from you know teaching and maybe to. You know, more mentorship. The teachers obviously, you know, has a, no- a lot of knowledge in their in their heads, and they try to impart this knowledge、um, in different ways to the students. But the most important thing is to be able to galvanize the students, to spark them,、mm. so that they can、uh, have the drive from within to learn.、Um, About the subject or about different subjects. The spark is very important, I feel,、yeah. in education. But when we think about the Chinese way of teaching, right, the traditional Chinese way,、yeah. emphasize a lot on you know, guai,、yeah. right, discipline and follow the rules, right. That's something that you you get asked when you come home、mm. every day, probably, like, did you follow the rules and,、right. at school? So when you think about that, that's not very conducive to you know challenging the authority and being creative and、yes. having your own way, right? Even for Writing Chinese, we have to write within the box, right? Like the form over the substance in a way. So how do you balance, you know, the influence of the East and the West? Obedience is a good thing, but not always a good thing. We need to、um, teach our students or help them to learn、uh, when to、um, say obey the rules. You know, for example, you're driving, you must follow the rules. But also at the same time, they need to develop some skills to be able to serve as,、um, say, civilized contrarians, because you can't all have the sheep mentality, and obedience cannot be the only、um, measurement of、uh, a virtuous student.、Uh, sometimes, especially teenagers, they will question authority.、Um, they would maybe disobey. They're just trying to find the right way.、Um, Come up with their own approach, or find their identity. I think through the years we've also seen that if teachers、um, come out and support the students in their, say, extracurricular activities or co-curricular activities, you know,、uh, during a basketball game or during their musical competitions or during some exhibition, if the student can interact with the teacher in a positive way outside the classroom, it's very conducive to positive learning inside the classroom.、Mm. Mm. That's why you said the teachers play different roles.、Yes. They can be, you know, soccer teacher. They can be,、oh, you know, math teacher. So can be debate coach. Interacting in different scenarios、oh, with、yes. the students. Oh yes. As the boys or the students grow older, the, menta- the mentorship,、uh, the friendship aspect comes comes in, kicks in a little bit more. And always the goal、uh, in the back of our minds is that the students are not just here for six years.、Um, We need. We will be friends with them 
you know, long after they've graduated here. And so if you have that in mind, uh, if you know that you're going to be friends with them when they're 30 years old, 40 years old, when you're 50, 60 years old, then your approach in the classroom uh, will change a little bit. 拔萃南书院最早创办时是一所孤儿院，这为学校留下了重视社会需求、重视师生关系的传统。除此以外，郑吉安也为不同年纪的学生寻找更多交流的机会，让他们互相影响。下节继续。一些南拔萃的毕业生啊，会选择回校执教。那这里的很多位前校长都是这里的毕业生，现任的校长郑基恩呐、啊、也是这样，他的小学和中学时光在这里度过，去美国读了本科和硕士以后回母校执教。那他从少年时期家庭遭遇变故，气氛不好起，其实就一直把南拔翠当成了自己真正的家，直到现在啊，他都住在学校，把所有的学生都当成是自己的孩子。Teaching has definitely been your calling. How did you first get interested in education? When did you know? Because you started very early. Yes, I uh, started thinking about what I wanted to do when I was in grade 10. My headmaster, uh, Mr. Loka, while I was a student here, uh, he gave us the space to explore our interests. Uh, he gave us the opportunity to pursue our um, passion. And the passion eventually became a calling. <laughs> It's to 在做校长之前，他曾任音乐科主任，多次带领学生合唱团踏上世界音乐的舞台，在包括世界音乐锦标赛等国际音乐比赛中连续夺冠。他也擅长打网球，是香港网球协会的副主席，对运动和艺术的教育深入拔萃南书院的基因之中。而郑基恩希望学生在练习和竞争中收获比奖项更多的东西。When you play sports. It's not just playing sport, as we all know, right? Not only are you training yourselves to be uh, fitter, you learn to uh, combat adversity, you learn to work with your team, you learn to uh, work with people who have different opinions and work towards a common goal. Um, you learn to um, give 120% so, so that you can be successful. Uh, you learn to pick yourself up again when you get defeated. We feel that um, Artistic training is also important for them, and especially for boys. Um, for us, I think for boys and men, we don't have access to a, a wide spectrum of emotions. Uh, even though we feel emotions deeply, um, we don't, we're, we're not always ready to identify them or express them. And we feel that artistic endeavor, uh, for ex be it painting or drama or music or literature, um, it helps us um, express ourselves, and not only that, more vitally, you learn to uh, get in touch with uh, what's really uh, deeply embedded inside. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about emotions. Uh, sometimes I feel that artistic um, endeavors help you get in touch with the spiritual side. And it's interesting when we reflect on the Chinese education system, it's actually very utilitarian. Oh. And in a way, traditionally undervalue, you know, the artistic side, the aesthetic oh, yes. side, because those are not, you know, instantly useful or applicable, mm. right? But now we see that it's very important to develop a whole person or finding the meaning in life by having, you know, all these different subjects inter intertwine oh. and intervene. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely right. Bacui Nan Shu Yuan, in high school, has a big brother, 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 big
and you have a Big Brother program, right, for the last year to train the oh, boys. Oh, we do. Most boys, uh, almost all of them, become either a chairman or a captain or a prefect or a student leader. We feel that it's very important for younger students to be able to uh, model after their seniors. That's how they perhaps decide, you know, where their passion lies. We're thankful that most of these senior uh, students, not only do they take up uh, the role of the leader, they also uh, take up the mantle to pass on what they have learned to the next generation, uh, to make the next generation even better or stronger than the previous generation. Do you find it very hard to impart these values onto, you know, the teenager boys? Um, teenage boys will always have their own challenges. Um, the school as a whole, we try to protect the space where they can explore, um, develop their own ideas. And as we all know, teenage, teenagers, they don't always have the right ideas. Well, but neither do we, right? So we need to protect the space where they can experiment and fail or discuss with each other to learn about different uh, approaches to problems or different ideals. Perhaps before they graduate, they don't realize um, that these seeds have been planted in their own, in their mindset or in the system. But definitely, once they uh, depart from this uh, environment, looking back or looking in, they will realize um, what the school has been trying to do, uh, how the school has been trying to support their growth this way. I think that's why I guess they keep on coming back, right? Yes. Because they're thankful and they're want thankful. to give back to the community. Oh, absolutely. So that's a very positive cycle. Ba Zui Nan School Yuan is Hong Kong's most famous high school. It was named for its great teachers, which attracted many students and parents to the place. From a certain perspective, the young people who enter this school are the winners of the competition. But Zheng Jian also said that they hope to give the first prize to the students who learn how to overcome failure. Do you think that the first prize is the one who succeeds? You've been teaching here for a long time, and you've seen a lot of students graduate. So looking back, like what would you, what kind of advice would you offer to them, seeing how they develop after graduation? Well, first of all, probably I give some advice to the parents. Even in this very competitive world, high-pressured world, uh, try to give the child some room to maneuver by himself, uh, some room for him to explore, or him or her to explore and some room for him or her to experience some kind of failure so that they can learn to get up again after you know stumbling and also give them room to explore the world a little bit by themselves instead of you know being uh, dictated uh, where they need to go what they need to study i think the passion will lead them to their calling which is very very important um, it would be good for the for the individual and also for the community. Mm. I think all parents men well, you know, they yes. all love their children and want yes. to provide the best. Absolutely. But sometimes the overprotection and the overparenting yes. do not lead to better results. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I feel that they probably think that they cannot miss out on each step. Um, they cannot make any mistakes because um, a good kindergarten, a good kindergarten would lead to a good primary school. A good primary school would lead to a good secondary school and so on and so forth, you know, going into universities and a career. But um, something must be said about giving space for the student himself or herself to explore. And I've experienced it from my own experience and also seen it from, you know, the guests I interview. I think leaving the empty space is very oh, yes. important for someone's growth and also for creativity. Absolutely. Um, being Chinese, we all know the virtue of leaving space, leaving the white space. Because of that, I think parents would be very nervous. You know. Oh, when, when is he or she going to be able to focus? Um, oh, he, must, he or she must do well in the test, which will lead to the next step. But I think life is much longer and much more important than where you go for, say, secondary education or tertiary education. But we all know that, you know, the process and the learning is more important than the Absolutely. result. But at the same time, we're part of this big system and there's Absolutely. not much that we can do, right? Grades matter so much in this current world. So what can parents really do? Um, you, you're absolutely right. There's not much room to maneuver, especially in the Asian society. Yes. But 
um, as a school, um, as educators, we try to um, show the parents that there are actually many, many different options. Going to a good secondary school or having a solid tertiary education is vitally important. But what is even more important is just like you said, uh, the ability for the individual to be able to, to learn, to explore out of his own curiosity or his, own, his or her own initiative. Otherwise, um, we can only spoon feed our children that much. Um, when they grow up to be adults, they, they still need to go into the workplace to work with people, to lead, uh, to serve the community. And the parents, as they grow older, they will, they will leave the nest, we'll grow old and we will, you know, depart. So we must uh, fortify the individual and let our children um, make up their own minds and really seek their own passion and calling. Mm, but it's easier said than done. Absolutely. So for parents, how do they create opportunities for failure for their kids or what, what should they do ah, when th their kids fail? That, that's a good question. Um, I don't think we need to create uh, opportunities for them to fail. I think life is challenging and difficult enough. <laughs> um, Especially when you're a teenager, you, you're just working with people for the first time. You're testing out your ideas and, um, and your principles for the first time. These are very valuable experiences and especially valuable if they can experience it during adolescent time. Mm. We don't want them to fail in the adult life yes. because sometimes you don't get a second chance. Mm. So Better to fail early, right? Yes, better to fail early and um, limit the scope of their failure. Mm. Yes. So in that sense, how would you measure success for your student? As parents, as educators, we, we must reinforce the idea to the students, to our children, that the process is just as important as uh, the results. You train as if uh, your upcoming com competition is the last competition you'll ever have. Mm. But after the competition, treat this competition as the very first one mm -hmm. and that there will be a whole series of competition coming up. And that way, you, you train them to have that focus, uh, the perseverance to work well, and then also the freshness, uh, the, the ability to reflect on what you have learned to rise even higher or go even further. 在参观的时候啊，看到从运动场上的教练到合唱团的指挥，到一些老师志愿者啊，原来都是这个男拔萃的毕业生。那看到校友们呢，这么爱学校，愿意是回馈给学校，其实很重要有一个原因啊，就是